Hi, I'm Nadish Joseph. I'm doing my first year of Philo Programming Management at IIM Trichy. This is video is short as part of the course requirement for Indian economy and policy. I will be discussing about financial regulation in India and whether India need a single regulator or should we continue with the current system of multiple regulators. What do you mean by regulation? Regulation in its broader sense means uh, establishing specific rules to avoid monopoly power, foster competition and protect the consumers, especially the weak consumers interest and also to avoid financial misconduct which is very common in financial markets. Who are the current regulators in India? We have Reserve Bank of India which is a central bank which controls debt, foreign exchange, deposit taking agency. We have SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India. Anything related to exchange is being regulated by SEBI. We have PFRDA which regulates insurance and pension. And then we have FMC, Forward Markets Commission which takes care of commodity derivative markets. There is also Ministry of Finance and then there is High Level Coordination Committee on Financial and Capital Markets, HLCC, which is currently a coordination committee without any legislative authority, which contain members from RBI, SEBI, IRDA and Ministry of Finance members. What are the issues related to uh, regulation? In earlier times, when we regulate one single institution, it means regulating one single business. Because earlier one institution carried out, for example, banks will carry out only banking operations, insurance companies will carry out only insurance operations. But things have changed due to globalization. Financial conglomerates have emerged who takes care of multiple activities. They may some banks will be in, uh, in, in invested in insurance. Insurance companies may be investing in mutual funds. So there is a lot of regulatory overlap. If there is sufficient regulation is not there in each of these areas, forum shopping will happen, which means a bank can go to an area where there is less regulation and claim the advantages of that. There can also be gaps which can be influenced or taken advantage by the firms. There will be wasteful duplication of regulatory resources which is being wasted in multiple regulators. Um, institutions undertaking a combination of activities cannot be regulated properly by uh, a single regulator who has only one objective or focus. So what we need is a product specific objective based regulation. What is the advantage of having a single regulator? In a single regulator, group wide risk will be covered as we just discussed. There will be uh, neutrality, competitive neutrality because different regulations for same activity for different players. We can avoid tough wars or buck passing. There will be more clarity on jurisdiction. There will be free of gaps. Seamless supervision will be there. We can also achieve economy of scale because supervision involves a lot of cost, administrative cost, technical expertise, um, which are built over a period of over so many years. So this can be achieved for uh, multiple areas. Accountability will be very high. And cost for the firm will be less because they don't have to go to multiple regulators for uh, any issues. Uh, scarce resource, technical, financial resources can be pooled. They can respond faster to changes happening in the environment. And for international cooperation, a single point of contact is always better. There are also arguments against a single regulator. When our power is concentrated on one single agency, it can lead to abuse of power and also monopoly. There can be lack of clarity. Because objective may be different for different sectors. For example, an um, objective may be deposit protection in bank, while it may be investor protection in capital market. And for some other financial firms, it will be consumer protection. And also, synergy gain will be low because risk on asset side is high in banks, whereas risk on liability side is high in insurance. There can also be a problem of moral hazard where public, public depositors and creditors will expect equal treatment by the single regulator. So these are all problems that can happen when you, if we have a single regulator. Like, can central bank become a single regulator? Of course, because it takes a lot of monetary policy decisions. It is always monitoring the consumers for their credit worthiness. It is always monitoring the banks for its credit worthiness, solvency and liquidity. So of course, it will be a good choice uh, for the central bank to become a unified supervisor. But what are the problems uh, that can happen? And because it's also a lender of last resort, uh, it, and it, it is charged with maintaining the macroeconomic stability in the nation. But it can also create problems. Suppose what happens if the supervision fails? It will affect the credit credibility of uh, Reserve Bank, which we can't afford. And it can also create fear that tight supervision will always lead to bank failures. So currently in India, uh, we follow uh, different regulation, regulators for different agencies and they share their information, they coordinate their information between them 
but there are a lot of confusions and lot of lot of gaps existing uh, currently in indian operations uh, there are a lot of committees which recommended uh, single operators like the ms verma committee deepak pare committee which came out with the reddy formula of giving legislative authority to the hlcc which i mentioned a little back some time back there are also m narasimhan committee and recently we also had the fs lrc which is financial services regulatory commission which came out of the recommendation of having a single regulatory authority replacing the current regulatory authorities of sebi irda and pfrda and fmc and calling for creation of seven new agencies which which have expertise in debt management crisis management solvency issues etc but interestingly many of the past rbi presidents our governors or chairmen have rejected this idea of a single regulator saying that uh, we need more thought because this regulatory capability has been built over so many years it is not easy to replace them with a single agency in one single day it takes lot of time because our indian system is not financially very complex where state is also involved in lending uh, currently the system is free of political intervention there are a lot of technical expertise that is built over the past 60 years in our regulatory system which cannot be replaced in a single day it takes a lot of time um, also comparing to the practices abroad what are the current practices that we have across the world there are a lot of uh, models being followed especially in uk and japan they follow the single regulatory authority which is outside the central bank and there are several other nordic countries like denmark iceland sweden where there are single regulatory authorities so the the popular belief is that time is still not right for india to have a single regulator the fslrc recommendations which came out in 2012 is still being debated so let's wait for the market and regulatory system to be matured enough to implement the single regulatory system in india thank you